I'm Jerry Jost, and for the past 10 years, I've had the good fortune to work for the Kansas Land Trust. The Kansas Land Trust was formed out of a tragedy, a, a loss for our community and all future generations. It was 30 years ago that a plow destroyed the Elkins Prairie, and out of that tragedy, out of that loss, grew the Kansas Land Trust. The prairie is one of America's, you know, most endangered ecosystems. There's not very much left of it. They're full of biodiversity. There are species out on prairies that aren't found elsewhere. They're part of our original history. They're part of Native American history, and they're really part of our cultural history. So many of us are very keen on protecting them and making sure they're part of our future. There's just few other places that demonstrate that biodiversity. And that's just the plants. That's not taking in all the insects and other pollinators and the birds. It's truly, truly amazing. They can be important your entire life. So that when you're a kid, you can go out there and you can have great fun finding all kinds of wonderful things. When you're a young adult, it can be a place where you can really make connections and, and build community. And when you're getting older, uh, it, it actually kind of washes over you, the, the early memories. And there, there's something about nature that grounds you uh, in, in a way that nothing else does. And, and so it can be a really source of continuity and strength. And uh, they can be models for us and, and inspiration for our entire lives. Compared to other, you know, empty landscapes of the American West that are, you know, enshrined in national parks, we don't have much tall grass prairie, no, not much prairie of any sort left in America that hasn't been um, in some way modified. Um, and, and when we say modified, usually we mean plowed, completely destroyed. And of our remaining prairie types in America, tall grass prairie is the most endangered. I was raised in the country and I, you know, I thought I knew prairies. But then I went to the Elkins Prairie, and the Elkins Prairie was incredible. I mean, it was, I was, my jaw dropped when I walked into that field. The Elkins was a wonderful meadow, prairie, with a really wonderful hill and landscape and dotted with wildflowers. If you were there in the spring and in the early summer, it was just a, a feast to behold. I just thought it was cool that we had this remaining uh, albeit small, chunk of landscape outside of the town where I lived that basically could trace its heritage back to the time of the glaciers. It was really eye-opening, the variety of plants in a relatively small area. It was just overwhelming. It was a whole different class of prairie. I mean, you could walk 10 feet and see probably 30 or 40 species, and it was stunning. It was just stunning. Uh, I could spend an hour going 25 feet. This wasn't like a Flint Hills Prairie, right? This is like mm -hmm. a deep uh, soil prairie. It was incredible, yeah. the mm -hmm. diversity there. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it, it was there since the Ice Age. Yeah. And it was so close to town that it was accessible for teaching. Yes. Anyway, I, I remember coming out here for that purpose and it was just a great experience, just beautiful. It was a sacred spot. Uh, every time I would go by that place, it was just like you were in awe because you knew what was there. Uh, and I would pull over a fair amount of time because it was so rewarding to go into that place. It was uh, 4.30 in the morning on a Saturday, and I got a call from uh, City Commissioner Mike Rundle. And he said, I want you to know that someone's out there plowing up the Elkins Prairie. I drove past the Elkins Prairie, which was on 6th Street, out to where the, you know, the, the South Lawrence traffic way is today. That wasn't there then. And I noticed a tractor in the, in the prairie. And, and I noticed, you know, kind of dirt coming out the back end of the tractor. So it was plowing furrows into the prairie. I do remember that it was 4.57 a.m. It was like, <laughs> I'm going to start calling people. So I just got on the phone and started dialing, and I spent a good hour calling people. I called a lot of people, and it was raucous. I mean, it was it was happening. I mean, there were people had signs. I, I think I think I told people to you know bring signs, but we just needed people out there. I just knew getting people out there would 
would be important. And you know, it was five o'clock in the freaking morning and it was dark and <laughs> there was a truck and a guy and, and I could hear the tractor going and the, the roots ripping and everything. It was very otherworldly to mm -hmm. say the least. But, uh, and he was not happy to see me there, obviously. And I'm an old farm boy and I grew up on the farm. Uh, land rights are huge. I mean, you don't trespass on your neighbor's property. You never do. I mean, so I was, it was pretty weird for me to be walking out there. <laughs> and I knew he was going to get, you know, slapped down. And he wasn't horrible, but he did tell me to get the hell off his land, which I did. But, uh, I, but I showed up because this guy, you know, told me to. <laughs> uh, and then I, you know, it's, God, it's been too long, but uh, I do remember the cowbell, and I remember that uh, that Gloria showed up with the cowbell. So sad to see what could have been an absolutely magnificent piece of open space, part of Lawrence, get plowed under. I remember there was a Native American on the opposite the diagonally across and was playing this hauntingly beautiful sound on a flute or some woodwind type thing. Mm. And it just crushed my soul <laughs> all the more wow. because it was so lovely. And there you stand looking at all this destruction. Even with the uh, total destruction of the prairie, you could still see the diversity in the clods that were overturned. And in fact, I took some clods and I took them and planted them a few places because it was such a, um, even after it was destroyed, it was more valuable than most land that I'm aware of. But what was really lost was, you know, part of our heritage here, part of our community heritage. Um, the best last gem of that historic heritage of what a tall grass prairie would look like. It crystallized and personalized for me what we have been losing all these years, a losing prairie, truly remnant by remnant by remnant, and being down to less than 2% of the prairie of the Great Plains. This was a significant <clears throat> parcel. So it seemed, it seemed really important that we be there. So when we lost the Elkins Prairie, it was really sad, it was tragic, it was maybe inevitable. We tried, we lost. You know, you kind of lick your wounds for a while, but that doesn't do much for you. And we realized that, you know, it wasn't just the Elkins. We had other habitats we needed to preserve and protect. And I think a lot about the martial art, Kia Kido, in which you take the energy directed at you and turn it on itself. You deflect it and turn it around. And I think that's what we were trying to do is to take that energy uh, that was wanting to build momentum to protecting a prairie and turning that into creating a vehicle for that. The Kansas Land Trust as an entity and conservation easements as a vehicle to protect land. I feel grateful that I was part of getting that conservation easement bill passed because it was so important and it is such an important tool that can be used to preserve these special places. Tom Aiken contacted me and said, I've got a piece of prairie I'd like to protect, and I hear you're involved in those sorts of things. And I went and met with him, and his wife had passed away, and he had the gem we know of the Aikens Prairie. But that then became the rallying cry, too. In fact, we talked about that at the legislature. We have this opportunity in Lawrence. We have a landowner, a farmer, who wants the right to protect this land. He has the right to plow it. He has the right to sell it. He's got the right to graze, get, it. graze it, get minerals off of it but he doesn't have a right to protect it. Boy, that made a lot of people scratch their head. Yeah. <laughs> you know, having the ability to put a, an easement on it so that regardless of who the owner is, they wouldn't buy the land unless they are, understand that this is something to be protected, and, and that's just a beautiful thing. The prairies around here are older than the pyramids, and I think that that deserves some respect. And I think that the cycles of the uh, seasons here are uh, something that go back continuously and so I find it fascinating that if you have something that is the same as when the settlers came here they they saw the same flowers as you do and for that matter uh, you know 6,000 years ago 
the people that were coming through were seeing the same thing. And to me, that's a very grounding, uh, wonderful thing that it's, it's an inspiration for me, personally. I think it's just realizing that these natural places are our national legacy when it comes to our history. We have natural places, whereas other parts in the world, they have deep, long histories of you know, buildings and monuments. We have forests, we have prairies. And these places collect stories and they collect meaning. And any generation of people can connect with that meaning if they have access. All of this is, is really important to what it means to be American. One of the lessons we learned from the plowing of the Elkins Prairie is that together we must work to preserve special places forever for all future generations. And over the past three decades, the Kansas Land Trust has preserved over 30,000 acres of prairie, over 3,000 acres of woodlands, just like what we're standing in today, and over 3,000 acres of prime farmland. We ask you to work with us to give gifts that keep on giving for all future generations.